okay so let's finally create the controller and let's take a look how we have done it here users controller okay i'll just name it as user controller user controller and let's just see all the routes and everything let's pick this code and paste it here just need to exclude this part oh oops so let's add the dependencies here and authorization not required http mvc newton soft we have to use the models correct ones so we'll pick them from here and this part is done and let's see so what is happening here so the namespace is going to be for our FME backend controllers and whenever the we will run this application so it will be like this the route and like let's say i have created i started this so our default one will be let's say our local host or uh, there is going to be some port and after that we will have this api and after that for the controller part we will have it like this forward slash delete user like let's say for example it would look like this api forward slash oops forward slash delete user it will be like this so that's what we are doing here and pick it as this the user controller okay so what this constructor is doing so first we are having a variable i use the repositories and this will contain all of the calls that we will use from the user repository so this is the actual place that we are using here so we will like add this in using the dependency injection here and we will have uh, our user repository here and uh, here the delete user controller so this requires authentication for now we will remove the authentication part so this will have the http delete and this will be the path for this controller delete user and what is this doing so delete user function we will get a user id and here let's replace all we'll replace everything for this okay so the user repositories is calling the delete user and it's getting the user id and after successfully deleting it will return a message user deleted successfully okay and authorize remove this so update user get a user object and call the update user and it will return user update successfully 
same for the getting all the user and user repository get users it will use this function and for getting a single user so allow anonymous okay so we can like leave it there only uh, let's remove this okay so as for getting a single user it will get a user id and it will get a user for creating a user the same user object it will call the create user and after that is done so we have returned this user created and for authentication we will comment it for now as we don't require this okay so we are done with the user controller and another thing so we have done the user cosmos service and user repository but if i run this program for now so it will give error and what will be the error basically so even though i have all these classes here but i haven't added it as a service in a program so the dependency injection will fail because it will like get null when i run this so to include this we have to go to a program.cs and we have to add it here in services so let's uh, do this so let's head to our program.cs and here so as we are using the cosmos so we have to include this part so i have added this function and let's see what this is done so it will take the user cosmos db service that we have created and let's include this so what this function is doing it is initializing the user and uh, by specifically it means it is initializing the cosmos client so what i mean by that so this is the client that we used cosmos db client so it is initializing that part and uh, what is it doing inside that so now we will get the configuration sections settings like database name container name and account and by account it means the specific key uh, which will uniquely identify the our cosmos client so our cosmos database so we will have the secret client and let's see so we have to install this package now this is done okay so we will get a vault uri and a credential so this default credential this will be our wait a second azure identity okay so whatever account that you have used for signing in the visual studio so this will fetch that and it will get that credential so using that credential you like whatever account that you are using for your visual studio that should be the same account that you are using in your azure so this will do your authentication part for you this will like get all of the details from here and after that okay secret try and get secret okay so like i will come back to this part and uh, now you have initialized the cosmos client it is having the account and count key and it will create the client now after creation of the client you have to like it will see 
if the database is already created or not and uh, then after the database is done it will see if that specific table is uh, created or not okay so for now what we can do is we can go to the app settings for json okay let's pick this part and let's paste it here so what this will do so we'll pick the details from here so it will pick the account the database name and the container name from here see configuration section the database name container name and the account so here let's go to our portal and now this will be the first time we are heading to the portal so let's go so hopefully you have already like did the setup for your azure so at first what we will do is we will create a resource group for our application so let's name it as refer me rg and select whatever the nearest region and let's create so this resource group would contain all of the data all of the resources sorry okay let's go to the marketplace and search for the cosmos So here we have a Cosmos DB and let's create this resource and we require for NoSQL. Okay, select the resource group and let's see whatever the account name is. So refer me. Refer me DB, let's call it this. Select the nearest region. So we will select the server list. We don't require any availability zones. Okay, by availability zones, it means like uh, in multiple regions, you will have the copy of the same data, whatever your Cosmos DB has. So we can get from all of the network. We require locally run backup interval. Let's do it as the maximal. Backup retention. Let's keep it as the minimum. And locally redundant, it means it will be in the same region, in the same facility with multiple places, multiple hard disks, you can say data encryption so we're managed and let's review and create this okay so now it's in point and let's wait for this okay so the creation is done and now let's see and go to this resource let's go to overview and here you can see the details so let's copy the uri and let's go to our app settings and here this will uniquely identify our account for this so this part is done and our database name i will keep this as the same container name users and let's go here and save this okay let's see if this requires anything else database name okay
Mm. Okay. So this part is done. Secret client vault URI. Okay. So what this will do is uh, this was supposed to go to Azure Key World and get the secret key. And since this key, what we can do is we can for now just keep it in our app settings only. So let's head back to uh, Cosmos. Let's go to keys and we'll copy the primary key. And uh, let's see, this was supposed to be connection string key. Yeah, connection string. So we'll copy the connection string and uh, let's just keep it in our app settings adjacent for now okay let's head back here and let's go to key and configuration section let's copy it connection string let's just keep it here okay so this part is done let's see the user cosmos db service so we have done some changes here so it will be user cosmos so instead of this it will be this and now this part is done so what this will do it will give back the cosmos client or specific the users so this part is done so now we will can just like call this function and this will do all the initialization of this cosmos client okay let's head back here and see if you miss something program.cs okay okay so we will add this code and what this will do it will allow like whatever public IPs that we are using to access our applications basically so we'll add the course so this will allow any any site any public IP eh, to access our application or at least until we like do the authentication for login and sign up so this will like, allow them to actually at least get to that sign up page so this part is okay valid controller not continuing the authentication okay so this is the part where we will add our cosmos service Mm, controllers okay we can do this after controller so this will call our function that we have just created here so this will add that as a service cosmos client And this will get our user cosmos db section from this user cosmos db section from my app settings.json and it will fetch all of that the account database name container name and so on 
so this is the part we are calling and it will get back our client and let's save this let's head back here and see if we missed anything else also we need to add our repository as a service so we can get that in the dependency injection so let's add this user repository okay this part is done and anything else okay so we have to because we have added the course for um, okay so as we have added the course for uh, people to access our site we have to add this here also in our apps okay so everything looks fine let's finally try to run this and see how this looks Let's put a debugger point here and see if this is actually even coming or not. Okay, so this is coming because I have changed it to user so change it to user okay let's start run again without debug now what okay i think this was talking about this key only instead of connection string 
So let's try to put this as this. Let's call it as key. Okay, so one thing, if we go to the Reformi DB data explorer of our database, let it load. Okay, so as you can see, this Reformi DB and user has been created, but uh, let's say let, let's close this. And I will rerun this after deleting it. I will delete this database. And I will put some debugger points here. So see, the database has been gone. And now this time, I'll start debugging. And you will able to see step by step how this is actually working. So see, we have hit this point. And uh, if I refresh this, there is no database. Let's continue. So this line is being uh, executed. And if you see create database, if not exist, I will refresh this. So the database has been created, but see the tables, the containers has not been yet created. So I will continue and create container if not exist. So if we go here and I will refresh this, see the users container has been created, but it doesn't have any data if we go here. So let's create some data. As you can see, post create user. Let's try it out. See, it has automatically seen whatever the fields that we need, and it has already created some data. So, if you go here and our application, I already have some test data for user. So, you can just copy and paste that. Okay, so some data here and let's just execute. So the user has been created. And one thing to notice, even though it has user ID, like let's starting from 185. If you go here in our data and refresh this, click this. The user has some another ID starting from A5. And why is that is because I've already like told in our user controller, we are generating some random ID before let's where is it? Create user and create user. If we go inside the repository from here and let's head to create user. Create user here. You can see I'm replacing this with using the GUID function. So this will create a random user ID using this. So that's why it is different here. So the username, password, and all the other fields we have here. And this is the create function. And if we go here, 
let some let's do some get user let's try it out and i'll pick the same user id execute and as we can see we are getting our id with the, the data <coughs> and if i try to get users with multiple users since we have only one data so it is giving me this that one data only and let's try it out the uh, update user let's get all of this data from here and let's change username instead of let's say others execute this okay the user field is required okay let's check out our model what were the fields that we had? <clears throat> it was username only. Oh. We have the user ID, password, company data worth. <clears throat> so I was just giving this error. Let's reset and try it out. Mm. Let's see. is an invalid start of a value okay let's set some debuggers and let's see what is happening
Okay, okay. Now, now I got it. Silly mistakes. Or was it? Hmm. Change the field. And let's go to profile pick. Let's change it as this. Okay, everything looks fine. Let's execute this. So the problem was that uh, the data that I have here, so it has underscores uh, this. So that's why it was giving me the problem. Let's change that. Uh, I will just copy and paste it from here. No, let's keep it this way since this was this this was for this project so i will create a separate test data folder for this project only Let's call it as a user. Okay. So the update functionality is also working. Now what's remaining is the delete. Let's run this. and create the port and let's delete the user let's go here and let's copy this id let's refresh this so this is oh so there's another data there are two fields now so let's delete one of them Let's go here in the swagger. I'll paste the user ID, hit delete, and user deleted successfully. So if we refresh this, so the user has been deleted. So the user, controller, and everything has been done. So now what we will do in the next one is we will add all of these controller repository service, Cosmos service for the job post.
and that's it for this one